Hello there. I actually wanted to talk about this new sculpture that has been put up on the plinth of Edward Colston. I made a video of this a few weeks back, the day after that statue was actually brought down. So <laughs> it's quite ironic that I'm making another video about a sculpture which has replaced that one a day after. <laughs> but I have big, big questions about this work in a big way and it kind of goes back to what I was saying in the last video and anyone who's watching this video now if we want some more context about the reason why I feel that I need to make this video today the day after this has been put up you'll understand <laughs> just how important um, questions about this need to be brought up let's go to this let me just swivel this around and you can probably see it on my computer there we go So this is it, this is called A Surge of Power, open bracket, Jen Reed by the artist Mark Quinn. And I'm just gonna go into the joint statement here. This is from Mark's uh, statement here. You see the picture with uh, a Black Lives Matter uh, sign, Black Lives Still Matter. Uh, sign and, um, and then it goes into an overview of the work and uh, a short statement from Jen and then another short statement by Mark and there were some parts of this that I would like of that I would like to pinpoint and question and question both Jen and Mark directly about this. Right, so let me just turn this around. Okay, so I'm just going to read just two, two paragraphs or the paragraphs that I feel that are very important. And um, you know, to start this conversation going, because undoubtedly this was. An attempt, as Mark would has said on his overview, to create a conversation. So this is the conversation. So this is one part of the conversation that you may have overlooked considerably. I'm going to go for Jen first. Um, now, Jen has written, and I'm going to read it out verbatim. Right. I, I'm collaborating with Mark Quinn on this project as he cares about pushing inclusion to the forefront of people's minds and uses his art to make people think. Creating this sculpture is so important as it helps keep the journey towards racial justice and equity moving because black lives matter every day. This sculpture is about making a stand for my mother, my, for my daughter, for black people like me. It's about black children seeing it up there. It's something to feel proud of, to have a sense of belonging because we actually do belong here and we are not going anywhere. Well, Jen, I've got a few questions for you. One of them is when you said, black people like me. Well, I can say for one, I'm black, very proud to be black, very proud that my parents are Jamaican. And I'm not like you. My grandfather fought in the First World War, in the particular, the Battle of the Somme, 1916 
two of my uncles fought in the Second World War, Burma and for the RAF. One of those uncles actually came on the first ships to, uh, to England as an immigrant. My parents have worked hard, created a business, we have suffered every type of racial injustice this country and its institutionalised and systematic systems have brought, whether subtle to the most violent. And I can bring up a particular situation where both myself and my mother were actually violently attacked by racists back in the 80s and 90s. So I know about racism very, very well, viscerally, very, very well. I'm not like you. Black people like you may agree with you, but they're not all black people. Many black people may have more conservative views than yours. Um, Jamaica in particular is a very conservative place. A lot of places in Africa are very conservative places. They have different views to you. The other issue is I like to take up with Jen is if this culture is so important that it helps to keep the journey towards racial justice and equity moving. How? How does it? In which way do you think that using your image, putting up a black power symbol, is going to keep it moving? And if it's going to keep it moving, in which direction are you hoping it to keep? Are you hoping it to to keep in a way that people are going to start talking or some having come some kind of unifer, unified approach what what what, are you, what is this moving where is it going that's for jen if you can get back to me jen appreciate it mark it's right this sculpture does capture a moment. You're recreating that moment. I, as an artist, it makes public work myself, definitely understand the process that you, as an artist, have been through, where you see something at the moment, you want to respond to it in the moment. There's an opportunity to respond at the moment. You've worked hard to be in the position that you're in to make sure you have the opportunity and the options to move much quicker than, say, myself would, or other people that look like me who are also artists could. And to be fair, Mark, you took the initiative and you went for it. Fair play to you, mate. What you see is making this very interesting. Is that you as, and this how it can be played out, you as a white male artist who's not from the city, then uses your resources, your privilege. Doesn't mean I agree to these terms, these are the terms that's been given. So you're using your privilege to make sure you can be an ally. When you're being an ally, you've used your resources to make sure you can create an image of a black woman protester, a black female protester, about a black man that was wrongfully wrongfully killed in the United States. 
I know that in your statement here, and I read verbatim, Jen and I are not putting this sculpture on the plinth as a permanent solution to what should be there. It's a spark which we hope will bring, will help, bring, help to bring continued attention to this vital and pressing issue. We want to keep highlighting the unacceptable problem of institutionalised and systematic racism that everyone has a juicy to fate, face up to. This sculpture had to happen in the public realm now. This is not a new issue, but it feels like there's been a global tipping point. It's time for direct action now. As well as being a person in the world, I am an artist and a big part of my work is making art about historical moments within contemporary society, like my history painting, which I have been making over the last decade, which started with an image from the London riots following the death of Mark Duggan. In my work, I look to the world and I'm committed to reflecting on what I see, including inequalities and injustices. Prejudice such as racism, is part of that. Keeping the issue of black people's lives and experiences in the public eye and doing whatever I can to help is so important. Those of us who have the privilege have a duty to be part of change, something that Desmond Tutu said resonates with me strongly. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. I think this sums up how we've reached the point where white people have to be allies. And white people in positions of power need to speak up and actively combat racism. For me, this has meant taking time to educate myself, listen to others, and find a meaningful way, meaningful way of contributing. The reasons why Jen wanted to do this together are so important. This sculpture is an embodiment and amplification of Jen's ideas and experiences and of the past, present and her hope for a better future. Some of those ideas obviously everyone could agree with However, to use another term that's been thrown about, and I didn't choose to use it, but it's one we use, is very problematic. You want to keep the issues of black people's lives and experiences in the public eye. When you saw that image of Jen, you had choices. Your privilege and wealth, you could argue, are one where you have more options, right? And you've worked hard as an artist, and I know everyone artist who's an artist knows how hard you have to bloody well work to get to this situation where you are now, right? And no one should take that away from you. And if you can use it to be an ally, fair play, go ahead. But you have choices, and that choice could have been with someone in your privilege. Could have easily said, Jen, no, I really want to work with you, I love that image, this is what I want to work. But you know, I'm someone who has a lot of privilege, 
and according to what you said let me see let me find it for me this has meant taking time to educate myself listen to others and find a, a meaningful way of contributing well you had an opportunity to contribute to be a real ally and you want to tackle institutional and systematic racism but mark you and i know because we work in the same industry just how in institutionalized and systematic racism exists within our own industry there's a reason why mark you're in this position and there's a reason why many other sculptors who look like me who are british not american but british have not got these opportunities that you have now that you're able to actually go ahead bring up jen and get this thing going but one of the options you could have done was to get in touch with loads of these other British artists that exist and they're black and they make sculptures like yours uh, using the same material as yours. Um, there's many artists that do that and I'm not going to insult your intelligence to name them. You can do your due diligence, which I'm sure you do as an artist anyway, and go and find these out. If not, you pay enough people to go and find out for you. Similarly, Jen could even even have the opportunity to go, hey, look, there's a, I really want to work with you, Mark, um, but I want to make sure that we're really addressing institutional and systematic racism. So maybe we should um, we should collaborate and open up the collaboration so we can have a, maybe an artist, a person of colour to actually collaborate with you because you you are white and male and want to check every type of privilege you have that you've worked so hard to get by the way um you are generously wanting to help another artist who happens to be black and or, and create a sculpture together so you've opened it up but you haven't made that choice and you've done something quite historic is that you've put a black power image a black lives matter image of a black female there is no depiction of victims of police um, crime and infidelity to their uh, to their duty to the public like deaths of people like for instance mark duggan you didn't put a statue of mark duggan up or george floyd or any other black male that did it who happened to be fathers you put a black female with a fist up i find that very strange and in a way a little bit safe to be fair and you see you talked about We've reached this point where white people have to be allies. And, and white people in positions of power need to speak up and actively combat racism. I want to see that. You see, Mark, without the consent of the Bristol people, the majority of the Bristol people, that statue, the Colston statue, was brought down and without the consent thrown in the river again without their consent you from outside has brought in a minority voice and depicted that minority voice and represent, represented that voice on a plinth 
again without the consent of the people of Bristol. So when it gets brought down and a black female gets brought down because, hey, if you can bring down one statue, why not bring down another? And if it gets brought down, a black female gets brought down. So everyone's going to cry racism. This is going to further polarise the conversation. Unless you're able to stand in front of people and then people like me to question your motives and actually listen and go back and forth in a dialogue. This is no start to any conversation whatsoever. All I can say is, from where I'm standing, when we talk about a surge of power, and the, we use a phrase often, let's speak truth to power. Always be mindful of whose truth and whose power, who benefits. And with that, dude, Jen, Mark, one love.